these thoughts of wanting them to like me and worrying if they don't like me was going to come up because uh, of course like I want people to like me but that's usually not an issue because I always feel like people do like me like I'm a pretty likable person like you know of course (laughs) without trying to stay out of my ego there but like I've never really I mean oftentimes at least especially like recently because I've gotten so much positive feedback from the people in my life so sometimes when I meet somebody and I feel like they don't like me it makes me it was just a weird feeling and it also had me overthinking a lot and so yeah I found myself kind of acting more inauthentic to who I am just in in little ways just because I felt like that's what the people would want from me in order to like uh, to be liked by them which I see now of course as that's there's no way to do it right that's not that's not authentic that's not who I am if it's not authentically who I am why am I going to act any different than who I am so that other people will like me because that just seems so obvious when I think about it now like just I need to continue being exactly who I am and the people who are meant to be my friends or who are meant to like me are going to like me and who are going to stay around and at the same time I'm not here I'm not actually here to make friends like of course I'm going to make friends and I'm excited to make all the friends right I'm going to make plenty of friends in this job but that's not why I'm here right I'm here to to serve these people and my role is not to be their friend it's to be their tour guide and those do overlap sometimes because we're all hanging out together we're having fun uh all for so long but that's actually not my job is to be their friend so I shouldn't be uh changing anything in order uh, of myself in order to be liked by them and to be their friend all right there's some background noises now but I'm just going to continue recording um bear with me um so what's next uh, okay, the next racket I'd say would be comparison. So a big, you know, this came up a lot for me. I know it's around the same lines as like wondering if the guests like me um, because like I said, I was doing this job with my friend Gemma and I had a lot of uh, thoughts and a lot of monkeys coming up around do they like Gemma better than me? You know, this is very similar to the do they like me. But because I think that that one's going to come up, obviously, as a, even if I'm on my own or not. But the comparison one was definitely more pre- 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 prevalent um, this tour because I was with Gemma and uh, I was constantly not constantly, not all the time, but many times I was worried that people were like li- people liked Gemma and they didn't like me. And it's funny because her and I have talked and I, you know, she often would think kind of similar things. Like she would think, oh, well, I'm not, what if I'm not this enough? I'm not that enough. Or like she, she uh, you know, and then for me, I'm thinking the same thing. Like what if they, you know, what if they like Gemma and they don't like me? And even if they did, who cares? <laughs> really? Who, it really doesn't matter when you think about it. But in the moment, of course, I don't want to be compared to somebody. And I think that's inevitable. I've also... I've also had not really experienced that much before because I grew up with two brothers. So I was never really compared the way that they would be compared to each other. Like I'm not, and you know, my parents are amazing. They didn't really compare any of us, but just in general, like if I had a sister, I would feel this, I would probably feel this emotion of, or this racket of worrying about being compared to somebody. Um, but because yeah I never had a sister growing up and uh so I'm not really used to that and so being in this job with Gemma like we're doing the same role we're getting trained for the same job and we're doing the same things and so there was I you know of course I was worried sometimes that well what if either what what if the guests like Gemma more than me or what if uh Simon uh, like thinks that Gemma's better f- equipped for this job than I am. Actually, that one didn't come up very often because like her and I were very like very much a unit in this. And at any time like one of us would make like would screw up, it was kind of like it was both of us. Like I feel like the whole time like we were doing everything together. So I really love that. I actually didn't worry so often that that Simon would think that one of us is better equipped for the job than the other. Like that didn't really come up for me. But um, but definitely with the guests, I felt like. Because Gemma's way, at least, I know this might be a story. Um, 
from my the the story that would co- was coming up for me and I don't know if you know whether it's true or not but the story that was coming up for me and that was limiting me in this was that Gemma is better able to she's better able to l- relate with women and this is something that I've brought up in the past um, I've always felt like I don't have a um, that I've I have a hard time connecting with most women and you know it's just very few women that I can get, have like really strong connections with. But then like the majority of them, I'm like, ah, I don't even know how to act around you. I don't know how to talk to you. Um, and this is a story that's been limiting me my entire life. And it's a story that I continue to tell myself. I'm, I'm really, I'm telling the story right now. So that means I'm still living in the story. And as long as I continue to tell the story, I think it's going to continue to limit me and my experience. So hopefully this is the last time I'm telling the story. (laughs) Um, But I do want to talk about it because it has limited me in this, um, in my experience. So I just want to talk about it. um, That, yeah, I felt like at times I felt really, like it was really hard to speak to a lot, like a few of the, you know, a lot of the women on the tour. Um, Not because of how they are, but just because of how I am. And, you know, I'm, (laughs) that and there's mostly women like there was I think four men on this tour four or five and 20 give or take women on the tour and that's I think how it usually is from my experience and from what I've heard it's mostly women and a few men and so I'm gonna need to get really comfortable or I I get to and this is something I'm really actually happy about is I'm gonna have a lot of experience relating to women and getting close with women And that's not something that I have very much experience with. So I'm excited for that. It scares me and it's going to be uncomfortable for me. There's so many times where I was uncomfortable being around so many women. But I also met so many kick-ass women. Like, I really, really loved them. Um, And they're just... And I have so much to learn from these these women from all over the world and from all these different ages and backgrounds. And, you know, I I made some beautiful connections. And... Uh, I'm going to stay out of the story of I can't connect with women, you know, because I think I I remember saying to Gemma at some point, like, oh, my dream tour would just be a tour of all men. That would be so much better. Like, I would love that. And yes, that would be for me, like that sounds like the like a way more fun, way more uh, comfortable for me. And uh, but that's not what I want. I don't want to be comfortable. So, you know, I I want to continue to push myself out of my comfort zone. And for me, that's a tour of all women. And luckily, that's most of the tours that I'm going to get. So uh, stay tuned on that. That's definitely going to be a work in progress because I think that's something that that's major, major going to come up for me throughout this job. So another limiting story or a limiting, yeah, another limiting story, uh, limiting racket that I have Uh, that also came up for me in the course, surprise, surprise, is that I can't, okay, this is going to sound really stupid, so just, like, let me explain after, but, you know, a story that came up for me is that I can't count because I was homeschooled, and I know that sounds kind of ridiculous, and it is ridiculous, but it actually did come up for me a few times, so, um, (laughs) <laughs> this is going to sound crazy, but the one of, I feel like one of the hardest things, the hardest thing for me was actually accurately counting how many people we had. Now, mind you, like sometimes the number would change. So we had around 24 or 25 guests and like the number changed because at some points people would leave. Like there was like a after 10 days, some left and then we had new people join on for the second half of the tour. So that but that number only changed a little bit. And then every day you know some people are sick some people are not so that number changes a bit um sometimes we have you know a few less than usual usually we did so i just had to like each day the number was a bit different but roughly around 24. and then and you think it would be easy enough to count 24 heads but for me that was so difficult so difficult when like one when people are kind of moving around at one point we had a, a boat that was two levels and I had people kind of going up and down the stairs and I would count the top part of the boat and then I would come and count the bottom part of the boat. 
but like at that time people were kind of at the same time moving around and going down the stairs and up the stairs and at that point I was like oh my gosh I can't do this like it was so difficult to count them I actually had to I'm pretty sure I actually had to tell everybody can you guys just stop for like one minute don't move because it was so hard um but even just like in when people are all in the vans ready to go like I will go do a head count I will head count people like multiple times like at least three times and every time I would get a different number and I just couldn't understand it like why is this so difficult I know how to count like come on like I know how to count so what's what's for the what's the problem and you know I uh, was talking with some of the guests like I you know I always talk about how you know, I, I've talked with many people about how I was homeschooled and like my up- upbringing because it's uh, and uh, like I'm, I'm proud I can talk about it like I'm proud like the, of my upbringing it's a really interesting story I have and whatever so like when when it comes up like I talk about it but then so then some of the people knew about that and so like and some of the people also like uh, knew that I was having a hard time counting the people because I would kind of openly make fun of myself about it and then I would kind of say jokingly but like still this is a story I think I think it's a deeply subconscious belief that I have that I don't actually believe but I think my subconscious might believe uh because I would still kind of you know make fun of myself like oh you know like don't make you know I can't count because I'm homes you know don't make fun of me I was homeschooled like shut up you know I was homeschooled like stuff like that like it's it's all fun you know I don't actually think that I'm stupid and I definitely know that I can count and I don't think that me being homeschooled has anything to do with it but maybe my subconscious does think that because I felt like also or not that I felt like what came up for me in the course in the leadership training um was and like through an exercise that we did I realized that I have this deep-seated um racket that I think that I'm stupid and this has been something that has come up for me uh throughout my life and I don't think that I am I definitely don't like to this day I I don't but I think that it's still a small small racket that comes up for me sometimes and I think that 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 subconscious thought that I am stupid has uh and like is still affecting my thought process because I feel like that's what's causing me to think that I actually can't count because I'm stupid like I don't know if I'm uh making a lot of sense here but um yeah, because it came up for me in the course where I would just kind of no, like, and this comes up for me in, in regular life too. Another example I can think of is when I'm learning a new card game, I, I tend to like, I always think that I'm not good at learning new card games and I, it takes me a while to learn them. And so I find it really hard to learn a new card game. And then, I don't know, I, because I think that because I think that it's hard for me to learn new card games because I'm you know, not smart enough or something, it is hard for me to learn new card games. But it's because I'm limiting myself and putting that limiting belief on myself and sticking to that story that I'm not good at learning card games. Just like I have this story that I can't count because I was homeschooled. Like if I continue to tell myself that story, I'm gonna continue to have a hard time counting the number of people. And that's not okay because counting the number of people is one of the most important things I can do on this job because if I miscount and I leave without somebody, okay, that's really, really bad. So this is something that I need to get on top of ASAP. So it's really interesting uh, talking about this. Like I I, I have no no shame in it. It's really interesting um, because I have had shame about this in the past. It definitely has come up for me like when I, for those of you who don't know, I was homeschooled until... um, And when I say homeschooled, I mean kind of more like life schooled. Like we didn't really learn much of the regular curriculum. All I really remember learning for the most part is like reading and writing. We learned a tiny bit of, you know, other things that I I barely remember. You know, I think that, um, yeah, it was more like life schooling. So learning more things that things that I actually personally think are far more important, like consciousness and how to be a good person, how to handle money, um, spirituality and just you know all of the things that you know and personal development things like this emotional intelligence and so I didn't learn a lot of math that I remember growing up so when I went to school I decided to go to school in grade six I was 12 years old and I went there and I didn't know a lick of math 
So I go there first day of school and everybody is to do like a test or a small like a small quiz and then everyone's going to read out their answers one by one is reading out their answers and I didn't have any answers written down because I didn't know any of them and it was just basic like times tables but I didn't know it at all and this memory came up for me in the course when I was kind of looking over my rap